My name is Renata von Charner. I'm the founder and president of the Charles River Conservancy. And this is a show about the parklands and today it's about parkour. So there is a little pun and you will soon understand how that all came about. I have with me today Blake Evatt. Blake is the director of Parkour Generation, uh, Generations Americas. Yep. All right. And I, um, as you know, we always um, talk about the parklands. We talk about the river. And the mission of the Charles River Conservancy is to make the urban parklands more active, attractive and accessible. Today we're talking about the active part. You have seen shows or can find them on YouTube about swimming, about skateboarding, about bicycling, about stand-up paddleboard, any sport that could be done on the river and on the parklands. And for attractive we have our volunteers and we work on making the path, the pathways along the river more accessible. So today um, we are going to talk about parkour. And I met Blake when he was one of those, he, the leader of this event underneath the Zaken Bridge in North Point Park. And there were hundreds of these people doing high energy um, efforts here, stretching, bending, rolling. So I'd like you, Blake, now to tell us what is parkour and how does parkour um, relate to the parklands, what you do on the parklands. So at its core, parkour is running, jumping and climbing. So a combination of those and all different ways of moving our bodies throughout our environment. Uh, it started in France in the late 1980s and was very much an underground activity for the first 10, 15 years of its existence. And then the early 2000s, it started kind of being exported via viral video. Um, so YouTube and internet videos. Um, and then got featured in a number of big motion pictures and has kind of now become one of the fastest growing sports on YouTube and uh, fastest growing sports in the world. Wow. I mean, what is so fascinating is that with sports, whenever you think of sports, you, you think of all the equipment. You know, if you're thinking of ski, you need ski boots, you need ski skis, you need ski poles, helmets, ski lifts. And, and for parkour, you need nothing. Uh, usually we, we recommend shoes, but there are a number of people that don't wear shoes. <laughs> all they, right, they, all right. Shoes are optional. Shoes uh, are optional. And yeah, basically just something that you feel comfortable moving in. It can be running sneakers, it can be pretty much anything. Yeah, yeah. So um, I have this wonderful picture here. Um, is that Boston in the background? Uh, or? It is. This is taken from the over by Shipyard Park yeah. over in Charleston. Yeah. So, I think what from this picture and from what I understand is that it's really it's you and the urban environment, and you you kind of using the urban environment to to challenge yourself and to overcome obstacles. Yeah, parkour at its at its core is is really kind of navigating through your environment and getting comfortable with your environment and how that relates to you. So being comfortable moving through an urban environment or a natural environment, wherever you are, um, and, and overcoming the challenges that, that come with that. Uh, once people master the basics, a lot of parkour is, is mental. We like to say that it can be up to 80% mental once you have the basics, um, because a lot of the struggle is, is internal and it's no longer kind of, am I physically able to make this jump? You know that you are physically able. Um, it, the struggle comes to be able to overcome the fear, overcome all the doubts and all the internal dialogue that's going on and, and be able to master that. Mm -hmm. and, and that translates to other parts of life as well. So it's not just kind of going out and training in, in your environment, but also kind of other aspects of your life where you may need to overcome obstacles, whether it's at work or at home or with your family. Um, we find that parkour carries over to all elements of our life. Yeah, I, I, I even remember seeing a group of young people doing parkour in Syria, yep. overcoming a war, you know, a city in war, and just feeling physically fit and, and to, as, as, as a, almost as a survival mode. Yeah, Syria and Palestine actually are both really uh, 
growing communities for parkour and that they're basically working with nothing they have mm -hmm. they don't have access to sports and, and the nice thing about parkour is you can do it any place you don't need a specialized terrain you don't need a field um, even with soccer where we say all we need is, is a ball and kind of two posts parkour you don't even need the ball um, you can do it anywhere yeah, and, yeah. and it, it gives you a, a degree of mastery over your environment that is is empowering as well and it gives people a sense of control over over parts of their life that they would maybe not have control over otherwise. Mm -hmm. And um, we all are familiar with, you know, the joggers along the river, the bicyclists. Uh, how would you say do athletes um, work with parkour? Do they make that, is that part of their routine or does it complement their routine? So I think it depends on, on the participant or the athlete. Uh, so there's a number of people that only come to the classes uh, that we run. We run about 20 to 40 classes a week all over mm. Boston. And um, give, give us the website. We will we'll have it up on the screen uh, later on. PK Gen Boston. PK Gen Boston. Um, and it, or search parkour generations Boston mm -hmm. um, but some people come to classes some people train on their own addition to classes some people don't come to classes they just go to kind of our bigger events or our free jams and they train on their own it's it's really up to the participant yeah yeah um, so people use it as a as a supplement to their regular training if they're training for something like a race or even something like a Spartan race or a, an obstacle course race parkour is a great way to train for that but even as just a way to have fun, it's much more interesting than going to the gym and, and lifting weights. And, and it's what we I call functional fitness. Yeah. And, and it's probably the most functional fitness you can do. Yeah, functional fitness. I That sounds like, like a wonderful term. And you have mentioned several places in Cambridge along the Charles where you train and where others train. Give, give us an example of some of those. Uh, some of our favorite places along the river are Riverside Press Park. Uh, we that is there the picture there. here? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we had a, a big event there. Uh, we also train at the JFK Park over by Harvard Square, mm -hmm. where we run a, a weekly class based in Harvard Square. Um, and then we are big fans of North Point Park as well because it has uh, a huge variety of things to play on and, and ways to move around. Yeah, you mentioned the skate park is, is too busy. <laughs> the skate park it's, is a little bit way busy, too yeah. busy. Yeah, but, that's um, right. It looks um, fun. I know they used, um, they used, some runners used it for stretching, but then you come into competition with skaters very, yeah. very quickly. Yep. Yeah. And I mean, when we built the skate park, uh, people often asked us, well, it's so dangerous to skate. And we said, actually, there are at least six sports that are more dangerous and have more accidents than skateboarding um, and I could imagine that parkour similarly um, is, 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 an, is actually fairly low on the on the danger scale. Yeah usually when we when we propose to a school or a community center that we'd like to teach classes with them and, and they'd say but isn't it super dangerous what we can point to is the, the actual injury data is, is much lower than a lot of your organized sports like soccer or football or hockey or baseball because you don't have the elements of competition and you also mm -hmm. are not depending on other people's impact on your body. So parkour is very progression based and the only people that are in control of what you're doing is yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and so people learn to assess that risk very quickly and they learn to take responsibility for it. And that's that's a big part of the training is is taking responsibility for your own actions. Yeah, and, and this whole concept of, of being in charge of, of your emotions and of your body is part of a symposium that the Smithsonian Institution and the MIT Lemelson Institute are holding on the 29th of October. And because they have found a correlation um, between innovation and having this self-directed sport. And I would think that applies to, to parkour as well as it does to skateboarding. Yep. Because you decide what risk you take and you decide what your moves are. Yeah, when you're when you're standing up there on the edge of a jump, there's there's nobody there that's making any decisions but yourself. You you don't have the peer pressure, you don't have the external pressures, there's no time pressure. Um, if you decide you're ready to do the jump, then you do it. Yeah. And you know you're ready for it, otherwise you don't. Yeah. This picture uh, um, is shows it at the Nashua Street Park and and when you had your national event, I was over 
uh, across the river in North Point Park with our Sunday games, and people were jumping down those stairs. <laughs> that and that was fascinating. You know, they jumped three steps, no big deal, four steps, and then I think that total of six steps. Yep. And if you don't control your movement, you're in the river. Yep. Which I think is an interesting psychological challenge to take on. It is, and I, I think that that assumption of, of risk and responsibility is, is really important for adults. And in today's society, we, we can pass on responsibility to others in a lot of ways. Um, but this kind of brings it back to you being responsible for yourself. And it's one of the, the key values that we try to pass on to the kids in our, in our kids' classes because that's something that they are not always exposed to, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. these days. Yeah, and you you teach in various schools in, in Cambridge? Uh, we teach all over, so we teach uh, about 40 classes a week right now, uh, about half of which are through schools throughout the greater Boston area. Uh, we are in a number of schools in Cambridge with uh, the Morse, the uh, Vassar Lane, and the... Um, Martin Luther King. Yep, the yep. MLK school mm -hmm. and also the Ringe Ave Middle School. Mm. So two middle schools and two elementary schools after school. Um, wow, that's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. Yep. Now, this is on the Charles River. Tell us where that is. This is at Paul Revere Park and it was part of our annual national event called American Rendezvous and it was basically a climbing challenge for, for a number of our more experienced participants. Mm. Um, but the, this Paul Revere Park has a a number of great challenges both in the playground and on the shores of the, of the river. Um, there's just a lot of great ways to kind of reinterpret how we interact with the park. Yeah, and that's the, that is, you have more pictures <laughs> of um, what's happening here. That is in the North Point Park. Yeah. And just that looks like a lot of fun and, and fitness there. A lot of it, a lot of parkour can be kind of related to games that we played as kids, kind of the ground is lava or getting from point A to point B. Um, these are things that a lot of adults forget. They forget how to play. Um, this is kind of teaching them how to rekindle that spirit. Mm. There was a lot of laughing when, when yeah. I was there. It was a, a great, a great day. So here, um, using the stones or the eggs, as the skaters call them, they, they lent themselves. Um, lent themselves. Now, you have been involved in working with Somerville um, to create, to design a park that incorporates parkour elements. Tell us more about that. So Summer was, has been really great about their whole acceptance of parkour from the very beginning. Um, everything actually, we, I'm from Somerville originally and we started the company there because uh, we wanted to be able to give back and I grew up there, I went through all the public schools including the high school, and, and I realized that there's a potential for, for parkour to give back to the community. Mm. And so the city has been very open to us. We teach in all the schools, we teach the rec, we um, hold our annual event there. Um, and so, so the this city... This is parkour central it here. It is. Yeah. Several, yeah. Several is leading the well, way Cambridge on parkour. Cambridge has to catch up here. I would, yes. I would encourage Cambridge to catch up. It would yeah. be great. Um, but, but Joe, the mayor, has been, been awesome. The schools have been great as well. And I think one of the, the big things that, that we've had been able to get an input in is on the parks. So a lot of times when there are new parks, we'll go to the meetings and when they're being renovated, we'll, we'll kind of just give input about ways that it could be uh, better, more open to parkour. So not necessarily designing a, a parkour space within the park, but making elements that work for parkour or that are adaptable and, and making those yeah. more present in the parks. Give, give some examples of, of so, what are the elements So having like to see. One thing would be having benches that are solid enough to kind of climb on, jump on, having railings or kind of uh, handicap ramps or kind of stones or pe basically pieces that people can interpret and aren't necessarily scripted. Like we see a lot of our plastic playgrounds. Uh, both Somerville and Cambridge are doing a great job in the last kind of two years and renovating a lot of their parks and putting in more creative elements that allow people to interpret them in different ways instead of kind of going up the stairs, down the slide, across the monkey bars. By interpret, you mean give them more play playfulness? Yeah, more happening? playfulness and also a way to kind of move that move on them in a way that ne hasn't necessarily been anticipated by the designer. I see, so um, yeah. So being able to kind of reinterpret their environment yeah. And, and Summerwell is actually 
um, renovating one of their bigger parks, Lincoln Park, and there will be a parkour area in that park, a uh, parkour zone that is we helped to des design and we're pretty excited because it'll be one of, I think, three at this point parkour parks in the entire U.S. And so this is, is a big step and we're hoping that to see other elements for parkour related to parkour in, in other playgrounds soon. Yeah, so um, so that's the outdoor, that's the outdoor um, excitement here. Um, do you, and we have, that's, I think that's all along, along the river. Yep. People cha um, challenging themselves um, with, with outdoor spaces. And, um, and I think that's, that's a move with walls, with vertical walls is something that one sees a lot in movies. Yes. And, um, and it's probably always the most impressive for a layman to, to see people approaching walls. So that would be how you start with a, with a small wall. Yeah, and I think one of the nice things about parkour is it's very progression based. And so people can start at, at really any point, whether they're, they're very physically capable or if they're kind of just getting into it. Um, there's always a way to, to find a way for somebody to do it. Yeah, and I see that this is a young woman. You you also have um, cl women only classes. We do. We have a, a weekly women's class that we run on Mondays and down, it meets in downtown Crossing. Um, and then we have seasonal meetups just for women. Uh, we just had our first one this past Saturday and it was great. We had a bunch of women come out and basically spend uh, four hours training with some of our female coaches and, and addressing kind of training techniques that work better for women as opposed to some of their male counterparts and also kind of building a community. Um, parkour tends to be a, a very male dominated sport, especially mm -hmm. in the media. But mm -hmm. in reality, our, our community here is much more even. Um, and, and our goal is to promote everybody getting into it. So from ages six to 70, um, and all ages. I'm still making it in there. That's yep. great. Yep. So you even have people who are who are not who are not teenagers. Yes. Yeah. Actually, most of our demographic here in Boston is is working professionals. So people mm. that are um, they want something that's more interesting than going to the gym. They want something that's going to be more engaging and is more fun and, and is functional. And so a lot of these people are coming out of work and going to train with us, or they're taking some time during lunch to go train in the park or outside of their office building. And, and that's what we want to encourage. We want people to, to have fun with movement and also to feel comfortable exploring their city. Yeah, I mean, that is what, what also is an interesting concept that you, by doing that, you get to know your city in, in a very different way. You get to know your city in, in such a, a very intimate way that uh, you would, you'd never notice otherwise. You get to know kind of what concrete different cities use, what bricks different cities use, um, kind of how they react to your hands. Yeah, and, you, we have a lovely picture here <laughs> of, of, of you, you had you had something that required a bit of hardship on the hands yeah, there. Yeah, people were crawling on, on concrete and it was a very hot day and they decided, some people decided to make it harder by, by crawling on the hot part and so they protected their hands a little bit with some tape but uh, I mean you get to know your city in such more detail than, than you would otherwise. Yeah, yeah. Now you have, you have also, um, do you have national events I like the one we saw underneath the Zaken Bridge where I first met you. Here you have an event of, of young of young people. Tell us about this event. So this is our annual national event. It's called American Rendezvous and it's happened here in Boston for the last four years. Uh, one day is in Summerville uh, at the high school and then it's indoor training and we build a massive jungle gym within within the, the high school gym. And then the second day is throughout Boston. So usually we'll do something around the Cambridge, Boston area. Uh, the past few years, we've used downtown by City Hall. We've used Josiah Quincy School. We've used Paul Revere Park, North Point Park. We try to get people out into the city and, and exploring their environment. Mm -hmm. um, we have a bunch of local sponsors, local businesses that will sponsor, including kind of big ones like Gentle Giant, um, that has mm. have been a big part a of big that. Sponsor, but yeah. then also the cities like the city of Somerville has been a big supporter of the event. Um, and we get people from all ages. We have our kids, we have our adults. Yeah, our the youngest, they look like, like kind of five-year-olds. Yeah, we've got some five and six-year-olds wow. in there. And then we have a, I think a 66-year-old in there as well. Um, oh, wow. So we've got the full, full range in ages and abilities. And people come from all over North America for the event. So it's kind of one of our, our big highlight events. And we bring coaches in from 
we have a team of about 20 coaches um, and about 150 participants. So coaches coming in. This past year we had uh, Germany, Denmark, the UK, France. We had one of the original French founders. Um, and then coaches from all over the, the U.S. Again. Yeah, and, and what is so amazing is um, I kind of became familiar with some of these issues for building the skate park. A lot of people are afraid of skateboarders because they are daring, and, but sometimes the skateboard escapes them and sometimes they're fast. Yeah. And with your, with your athletes, um, there is no skateboard, so that means it's, it's only your running speed and it's nothing can escape. So there is no reason really people should be afraid of, of parkour athletes. Yeah, I think people are also uh, often very intimidated when they first see us training because kind of we're doing things that most normal people would never consider doing. But once people stop and watch for a while, they, they start to see how accessible it is and also kind of one of the, the important tenets of parkour is, is to leave no trace. So we don't mm. want anything but kind of visual memories um, or digital memories of, of our presence in a space once we leave it. Um, maybe a few scuff marks on a wall, but that should be it. Uh, we want to be able to preserve our environment and make it possible for people to train there perpetually. Yeah, the digital so. memory. Um, I know that uh, there are a lot of, of films mm. And yes. um, if you if you Google parkour and their TED talks and wonderful films, yep. so I can imagine that is similar to the skateboarding that you you film each other because that's I guess that's also a way to learn. I think parkour spread very early on through viral uh, media, so mm -hmm. kind of internet videos. Today it's, it's very much driven by that. But one of the things that we try to focus on with our community is is having people focus on on the, what they're doing as opposed to kind of posting something on YouTube. Um, there are a lot of groups out there that are really active in, in terms of social media presence. And I think for us, we, we try to preserve more of our, or orient more of our stuff towards kind of the here and now and, and kind of what we're doing. Um, but yeah, there's the imagery from parkour is always pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely um, got my attention when I saw all these, these people doing their, their things. Um, so here is an example of a, that a teenager who is approaching the stairs in a very in a very new way. Yeah. So this is from one of our classes in Belmont, and uh, what we've seen is that there's there's a, a huge interest, especially in kids, and, and we're finding is that we're able to get a lot more girls involved uh, when they're younger, and kind of a lot of the societal. Um, kind of conventions and ideas of what girls should and shouldn't do haven't kind of been imposed on them yet. And what we're finding is that a lot of the girls are, are kind of just as good as the, as, as the boys and there's, there's not a, a gender difference. Mm -hmm. um, the, the impact really happens at kind of once they become teenagers and what we want to do is be able to encourage girls to, yeah. to move throughout their lives. Yeah. And, and you also, is, th is that you here? Uh, that is me. That's, That's teaching at our teaching at our kind of the parkour zone of Brooklyn Boulders in Somerville. We have a, a space in the back there that we share with Brooklyn Boulders to, yeah. to teach classes, and we have kids classes, adult classes, and special workshops there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great space and, and has a lot of great places to move. Yeah. Well, Blake, it's wonderful to to have you tell us about this sport. Thank you. That. Not everybody is familiar with it. It's still relatively new. Yes. So it's how many years old now? So parkour itself was started in the late 1980s. Mm -hmm. um, it's really only been here in the States for the last kind of 15 years. Yeah. Um, and we've been here for the last four now. So. Wow. So you've made, you've made a, big, a big inroad. Yeah. So if you just joined us, um, our um, shows are on YouTube under the Charles River Conservancy. And... Um, and there you find all kind of other shows about the Charles River of all the things we do along the Charles River, landscaping, volunteer events, bicycling. So I hope you continue to um, make the parklands active and, and you're setting a very good example of not to leave a trace because a lot of things do leave traces. So that's wonderful. So I want to thank you and, and we have now a picture of, of how people can contact you, pkgenboston.com and below is your 
what is your email if they want to contact you. So um, I want to thank you, um, Blake, for coming today. Thank you. And um, and we'll we'll see you see you on the parklands. Yeah, that sounds great. Wonderful. <laughs> thank you very much.